Hello, welcome to the API Good Dogs podcast. My name is Laura Vosch, and this is a very special episode, one of four, bringing you the recording of my conversation with the Dev Portal Awards jurors at the Awards Gala event last December. In this episode, I ask what awards jurors Chris Bush, who is programmer, documentarian, and people manager at MongoDB, Koichi Shiroma, who is a product development black belt, and Fabrizio Ferri Benedetti, famous blogger and principal technical writer at Splunk, think on my questions around the current state of developer portals. In this episode, you will hear a loud cheer for more cohesive experiences with some healthy dose of experimentation and much more interactivity. And I must warn you, after listening, you may decide to drop animated scrolling from your developer portal. You can also find a summary article of the awards results on pronovix.com. Look for Best Developer Portals 2023. With our deepest gratitude to the jurors and all people working on building excellent developer portals, enjoy. So the questions are no surprise for the jurors, just for your information. They know this, but I don't know what they're going to answer. And I'm going to ask first, Fabricio, since you're unmuted, did you see certain aspects of developer portals coming more into focus as opposed to a couple of years ago, developer portals? Um, Well, first of all, hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, inviting me. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And I love this virtual regard thing with the tables and all. Uh, That's great. To answer your question, Laura, uh, well, I, I see two interesting trends going on. Uh, one is, uh, well, this has been going on for a while, but I think there's a, there's, there's a constant search for a more cohesive experience in the sense that um, developer portals often started out as just, uh, uh, you know, uh, disconnected reference documentation and guides, um, very often with, with different look and feel uh, because they relied on different uh, tools, for example, for building the, the static output. And I'm very pleased this year to see so many developer portals really striving at, at maintaining a creative experience throughout. Uh, not just in terms of things like, uh, you know, colors, for example, or fonts, but even down to the UI elements for user interaction, for example, or some tone. Um, that's really a nice trend to see. Um, and the second thing that I see um, growing, uh, though not at the level that, that I would love to, is localization and internationalization. And that is also on the rise. Um, we tend to forget sometimes that uh, um, you know, users come from many, many different countries. And uh, software used to be localized a lot in like, you know, the 80s and the 90s. And uh, somehow we seem to have forgotten a bit of that, you know, along the way. But now it's taking up again. And uh, I've seen some very good effort in, uh, in embracing internationalization in developer portals recently and among our competitors and, and contestants. And uh, yeah, so those are the two trends we've been seeing. Chris, how do you think about this? What aspects do you see coming more into focus recently? Yeah, thanks. And I'd also like to say uh, thank you so much for having me as a, as a jurist. And uh, it's been a great honor. And uh, it's been really great to see all of the uh, work that's out there. I think the trend that I'm seeing um, that I'm liking is is that uh, the dev portal has been becoming very practical and hands-on and focused uh, with lots of uh, lots of emphasis on the getting started experience, the uh, time to wow, if you'll excuse the uh, cliche. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that seems obvious, but it's really easier said than done. Um, really deciding what elements to focus on, uh, what to present to the user, in order to uh, get them on board and uh, actually doing something with your product. Uh, it's it's a challenge, and when we've seen it work uh, on the uh, on the um, sites that were presented to us, uh, it really did work, and it, and it made a huge difference. Um, so I really just think that the emphasis on the practical and the uh, and the hands-on has been a great trend to see. Thank you, Akoiti. Yeah, actually, I was gonna say something similar: onboarding, um, bringing the developer into the 
full experience uh, of the service, um, bringing things into context uh, is a lot more uh, important these days than, than just providing uh, documentation and tools. Uh, the overall experience and, and uh, clearly some emphasis on a time to wow rather than time to hello world, which uh, I think over the last couple of years we've seen get a bit hacked, I would say, you know, as a shortcut to providing value. But yeah, these days much more focus around context and uh, education for, for the developer to be uh, useful. And if I may turn this around, uh, which I really like doing, um, is there is there aspects or parts of developer portals that keep lingering on uh, for Visio? In, in general, I, I, I will... <laughs> Uh, I would love the Stripe syndrome to go away, you know, in the sense of everybody loves Stripe docs, we want to have Stripe docs, and uh, I think we are in a good moment to leave that complex, refer to complex behind, I think, and, and explore other ways of doing API documentation specifically. Um, um, you know, I think there's, there's lots of room for innovation, and instead of just trailing behind the thought leader in the sector. Um, that is perhaps the thing that I would gladly leave behind next year. Let me surprise Kochi. What do you think, Kochi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to say the diversity around how uh, you get to whatever you want to call it, the endpoint information or, yeah, I, I like the healthy uh creativity that's going on these days. It's, it, it is uh, not just Stripe or Swagger, I think. I think there are uh, a little more uh, creative things going on. Uh, and I think that's only going to increase uh, going forward. So yeah, the days of everybody copycatting, I think there's, there's a lot of room for experimentation, especially around, you know, obviously code gen and um, AI tools to really, really change the interface and, and how you communicate and how you you gain knowledge around uh, other services. So I think that's going to be interesting and seems to be already uh, going in that direction. Uh, do you have some strong feelings about certain things that you'd rather not see too much anymore? Um, I don't have strong feelings about anything, but the, uh, you know, one thing, and this may seem very superficial, but I think it is a bit indicative uh, of, of a wider sort of uh, thing that I would kind of like to see be left behind. Um, is um, animated scrolling. Uh, I know this is, like I said, this is probably superficial, but it does feel like something that um, where we've sort of put the uh, cart before the horse, um, you know, and I, I do think that the form needs to follow the function, right? And the functionality of a docs site is to give us information. Um, and so when I'm clicking through a site, um, I I really don't want to interact with like, uh, something that tends to be kind of buggy um, and and watch uh, the thing scroll, um, you know, and, and take take a minute. And I mean, I can understand why people have added these um, because it, uh, it looks cool, but um, it's not practical and uh, it does it does annoy me. So I, I hope uh, my, my PSA is this very superficial minor thing um, to uh, maybe stop animating the scroll, just let us scroll. And if you click something, don't animate down, just just teleport to that that zone <laughs> so you're not opinionated right <laughs> i have no opinion <laughs> server, but yes on that one thing right. <laughs> um and uh, don't mute yet here so i'm going to ask you first um were there surprising novelties that you have seen um in, in i'm going to couple that to the bonus question if this was science fiction what would you like to see if like if you rip away the context of what's possible just the function Right, right. Um, I think um, one thing that we were seeing a lot um, uh, in a good way was uh, was these recipes or, again, not, not to just repeat myself, but uh, we would have really specific uh, hands-on things that you could do, you could follow to really get started. Um, and uh, that, I think, was, was uh, great to see. Um, you know, and they would be very, like I said, they were specific use cases. It wasn't just general um, getting started with uh, with a thing. It would be like, uh, you know, how to integrate with a specific third party service or something like that. Um, 
you know, I don't, I don't think that everybody should spend all their time making those things, but when, when you do have them, it is nice to have. Uh, so that was a nice, uh, sort of thing to see. Um, as far as the science fiction, um, I think it's not really that far off, honestly, but, uh, you know, with the advent of the large language model, natural language processing, AI, and all that stuff, I, I think we are on a bit of a, a maybe a watershed or a, a cusp of a, of a new way of interacting with the documentation. Um, if done tastefully and correctly, I think that there's uh, a way to have uh, the way that we lay out information um, uh, become more dynamic and answer users' questions. Um, you know, uh, dynamically, uh, according to what they sort of want to know, um, by using some of the some of the LLM things that are coming up. But again, trying to keep it tasteful, and just recognizing that AI has a specific use and purpose and limitations. Um, but I really think that that is sort of the direction that things are going to go at some point. Um, so really, it's not that science fictiony, but uh, but yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking of in Star Trek, the uh, you just ask the computer to do stuff for you rather than really fiddling with a lot of knobs and and reading. You never see you never see people in Star Trek reading documentation. They're always just they already know how to do things. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's sort of where I'd go with that. You also don't see them waiting for the ads before they get the answer. Right, exactly. <laughs> Fabricio, what do you think about science fiction? Oh, I love science fiction. I mean. Um, you know, in terms of, of surprising novel approaches, um, I really I really enjoyed seeing more um, more interactivity in the opponents. Like you know, uh, like here's a snippet of code you can run it. In some cases, you could even run the snippet of code within the product, right? That I think is is the wow moment, the wow effect that sometimes we are seeking in products, and it's nice to see it in in the proposals as well. Bringing that idea a bit far into science fiction, I don't know if it will make sense, but I, I kind of wish that products could be their own developer portal. And by this, I mean that users could somehow, and it's interesting because it kind of connects with Chris's idea of not having to read documentation that much, which is kind of a you know, contradiction when it comes to developer portals. But, um, if the developer portal, if the product, you know, could be taken apart into pieces, into sub-applications that users could repurpose, connect, reorder, rearrange them in new configurations as they saw fit, uh, that would be, I think, a, a very interesting direction. Not necessarily no code or low code approaches. There are also some developments there, but I still thinking, you know, that I love um, retro computing reading all manuals, and I still remember, uh, you know, when you used to be able to rearrange uh, UIs in, in the way you wanted in desktop applications. You could have the panels the way you wanted, you could change the shortcuts, you could rearrange the applications in, in whatever configuration you, you wanted. And with, with web and mobile applications, I think that kind of went away. Um, as, as the user experience seems to be more way more controlled, um, it would be lovely to see that coming back somehow, so that people could uh, should be more playful. I think you know developing something should be should feel a bit more like uh, doing some Lego construction rather than uh, pulling a number of API endpoints using curl one after the other. Um, but that's that's totally science fiction. You know? That's you know you ask me and I came up with this fantasy. I wonder how we could make APIs tactile. It's a bit <laughs> okay. Um, and um, products, Koichi, what do you think? Um, are there new novel approaches to how you see thinking about APIs, and how would the Star Trek that portals look like? Yeah, I think I, I think that's going to be for the next year's uh, gala and going forward. This year we didn't see too much of it, but definitely. Uh, tools around writing working code and uh, getting to productivity sooner rather than later. Uh, another thing I, I think found interesting and, and some of them were 
really inspirational, I don't know if the, you really call them stories or uh, incentives around using the service or API in areas that you know I wouldn't have found myself being interested in when I first went to that dev portal. But the approach was so engaging that it really kind of motivated me to try out whatever it was, even though you know I, I may not have been interested there. So I, I think motivation and uh, gaining interest around the services for uh, potential developers that you may not have targeted before um, for some of these services could be uh, pretty interesting also. Thank you. Um, is there any remarks that I didn't lead you towards with a question, but you do would like to add? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After saying it's so much work to be a juror, <laughs> would you give some encouragement to future jurors? Why was this? Why is this worth it to put in so much time? Is it? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a great time doing it for sure. Um, it, it's as we discussed in our jury, it's rare to be able to kind of nerd out on such specific stuff, you know, when, you, when you're doing it day in and day out, uh, besides your own team, uh, you don't really get to interact with other people doing it in the space, unless you're a consultant or something. But uh, yeah, I thought that was, that was cool for sure. Yeah, and uh, I mean, <clears throat> you learn so much um, just by looking deeply at other approaches. Uh, with a with a not not entirely involved eye in the sense that you know it's different when you're doing some benchmarking maybe on your company looking at your competitors and so on but the variety of sectors covered by by these words were so refreshing you know like um, I never worked for example in in the, um, in the in the in the car industry and looking at their approaches to things is is so refreshing and, and different so uh, uh, it's a great learning experience. Yeah, I'd, I'd really encourage anybody who's interested to uh, to try uh, doing this because it's it is uh, it's fun. Surprisingly, uh, it is uh, nice to be involved uh, in a community uh, in the industry rather than you know we can be very siloed. We can do our own thing and only see what's in front of us. But it's great to see what's out there in a structured way. Um, and to uh, and to try to give back in that way, um, and um, yeah, like I said, it was it was genuinely a lot of fun. I really enjoyed my uh, my sub team uh, conversations, and uh, we were all brought the right amount of passion. There was no uh, it wasn't uh, you know annoying in any way. I, I really just enjoyed doing it. So I would really encourage people to uh, to reach out to Laura yeah, for next year if you can. <laughs> Thank you for this. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the API The Docs podcast. We thank our colleagues at Pronovis Developer Portals for letting us work on this and the entire API community for all of the mutual support and sharing of experiences that you give each other. Do you have a topic or guest that you would like us to spotlight? Drop a note at podcast at pronovix.com. If you go to the website, apidocs.org, you can find the recaps and recordings of past API Docs conferences, as well as the upcoming program. Until next time, be well. <laughs>